The Government Pension Investment Fund, or GPIF Japan, is the biggest pension fund in the world with nearly $1.5 trillion in assets. The fund's been leading the way in ESG integration with its many, many obstacles. So please welcome on stage Hiro Mitsuno, Chief Investment Officer and Executive Managing Director of GPIF Japan, and also a board member of uh, Principal for Responsible Investment, about talking about the uh, different investor approaches to address climate change as a critical ESG factor, and of course, um, really aligning uh, all of that for the long term. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just flew in from Tokyo this morning, and I uh, hope I'll keep my brain sharp over the next 10 minutes. Uh, first of all, congratulations for such a successful event, and uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me, and I really appreciate all the work done by uh, UNEP. Uh, GPF actually started uh, becoming active in the area of sustainable investment over the last three years, and all our uh, achievements so far wouldn't have happened uh, if it were not for the uh, people like uh, UNEP FY and the other people in this room uh, did a lot of like foundation work uh, for us to uh, catch up uh, to and uh, you know to keep up with the other uh, the uh, uh, learning curve uh, of this initiative. GPF managed 1.5 trillion U.S. dollar worth of Japanese public pension fund. And uh, we regard ourselves as the typical universal owner and a super long-term investor. We actually own the market. We actually own the universe. And then given our size, we actually concluded beating the market is not the right business model. And uh, I just wanted to just make it clear to the people in this room, I really don't think that's a good business model for any asset owner, regardless of the size. Because at the end of the day, as a community, asset owner own the capital market. So we need to make the capital market more sustainable. And for the capital market to be sustainable, society must be sustainable. And for the society to be sustainable, environment must be sustainable. So that's exactly the point we are trying to make. And we have taken a lot of actions which we like to, I'd like to share with you. And I hope that people will join our campaign to make the capital market more sustainable. We started with our equity portfolio by looking at the passive management portfolio. Uh, about 90% of GPF, the equity portfolio is managed passively. And when you look at the passive management, our biggest asset manager is actually BlackRock and the others. But in reality, who actually make the uh, judgment which company we ended up owning are index vendors. So we now started more actively engaging with the index vendors. And I think index vendor has received much less attention than it should be given their importance uh, in the way that the, uh, how the capital market, the portfolio will be dictated. <clears throat> so we are now shifting our passive portfolio from the uh, traditional market weight uh, index to uh, ESG themed uh, weighted index. Two months ago, we introduced the S&P Carbon Efficient Index, and we invested about $1.5 trillion, about $15 billion behind uh, the, uh, the Carbon Efficient Index. That index is designed to overweight the company who has a higher carbon efficiency, and the underweight the company has lower carbon efficiency within the industry. I understand it's very, you know, they are subject to debate, but GPF has a policy of no divestment because we believe divesting the other, uh, some particular company or industry, we are basically handing the ownership from the responsible investor hands to irresponsible investors hands. What, that's what we are not trying to achieve. But I do understand there are several different approaches and uh, GPF trying to uh, promote uh, more within the industry carbon efficiency uh, by uh, you know, the overweighting, underweighting, the, uh, the depending upon their carbon efficiency. And when it comes to the um, active managed portfolio, we are demanding our asset manager to integrate ESG into their investment analysis. And also we request them to specify which ESG issues are critical to particular portfolio companies. And we hold the asset manager accountable for their choices. 
So for example, if the asset manager chooses climate risk is one of the most critical risk for that particular company or industry, we hold them accountable and we follow up how they engage with that company and how they exercise their proxy voting according to their choices. And uh, some of the companies, I mean, I mean uh, asset management companies should have received much smaller check this year as we found the discrepancy between what they present to us and how they practice their promises. So uh, we have been very seriously uh, engaging with the asset manager in equity space. And uh, last year, we expanded our scope of ESG integration into fixed income as well and alternative asset classes. For fixed income, we launched the joint research program with the World Bank Group uh, to analyze and research how to integrate ESG into fixed income investment. We found it very difficult for several reasons. At the moment, although the, uh, the increasing popularity of a green bond market, I really don't think it's making the mainstream uh, investment product. The reason why is, it's so far more costly borrowing for the issuer and less liquid investment for investors. So I mentioned this at the, uh, the World Bank screen meeting, said that at the moment, green bond is still lose-lose product. We need to redesign it to make the mainstream uh, investment product. And uh, we really appreciate that the, uh, the, a lot of the collective intelligence we can collect from the industry to make it more you know, the workable and uh, uh, appealing investment product. And uh, sometimes I believe that people tend to under, uh, overestimate the power of shareholders. Well, shareholders have power and influence over the companies, but we cannot push the company over the cliff of this uh, bankruptcy or the cliff of no project. That's why I think the, uh, the bond investor and banks has significant uh, responsibility and uh, it can play a much bigger role in the uh, directing uh, the portfolio and a capital market. That's exactly the reason I really appreciate the, uh, the, um, the new initiative, the principle of responsible banking, because we just cannot achieve the, uh, the uh, sustainable capital market by having shareholders only active in this space. We need bond investors, we need banks to make it happen. So having, all said, uh, having said all that, uh, GPF really struggled to just uh, you know, to keep the long-termism within our uh, investment chain. Uh, GPF just advocate for long-term investment, and the ESG becomes relevant when you take a long-term perspective. But in reality, how many the asset owner who actually give the multi-year long-term contract to their asset managers? GPF shifted our contract of active asset managers from like a single year uh, rolling uh, contract to multi-year commitment because we need to make it into contract. And at the end of the day, asset manager cannot dictate how much time they have to manage their portfolio. It's asset managers, asset owner's responsibility to make it clear we want the asset manager to manage our money with a long-term perspective. Once again, I just wanted to stress uh, the journey towards more sustainable uh, capital market cannot be achieved by single player. Asset owner has a vast responsibility to direct asset managers' uh, behavior, but we need to have banks, fixed income investors, everybody to participate in this uh, the initiative, and this is the fight for our humanity. And uh, please join us to make the capital market more sustainable. Thank you very much.